Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members for allowing me to present AB 312, the Saugus Strong Act. All of us in this room are parents or grandparents, and maybe you can relate to this. But when I come up to Sacramento and work on legislation, I often think about my daughter, who is just starting kindergarten. I think about what kind of future we are helping to shape and how she'll do. Every day I think about that. And so every day I work to try and make the future brighter, more promising, and safer. As many of you know, I represent Santa Clarita, which was rocked to its core by the 2019 Saugus High shooting. It upended lives and left a gaping hole, gaping hole in my community. To the children, parents, teachers, and community members directly impacted, it is an earth-shattering occurrence that never seems to go away. It was the latest school shooting in California, and I want to make it the last. That is why I introduced the Saga Strong Act. It's a bill that would establish in California one of the most effective programs to reduce violence on campus, a statewide anonymous reporting system. The adage, see something, say something, is extremely true. All too often, prior violence happening on campus, someone other than the perpetrator is made aware of it. This bill makes sure that regardless of who that person is, that vital information is passed along to the proper authority. This is something that has been implemented with great success in multiple other states. This program has saved lives. It has prevented mass shootings, it has stopped student suicides, it has helped end the code of silence among students. It makes sure that the right people know the right information before it's too late. It's as simple as that. We've got the choice today to move forward with a proposal that has been proven over the past few decades to save lives. So I ask for your support on this measure today to move it forward in the process and to continue this important discussion on improving safety on campus. Here to testify in support of the bill today on the, the phone lines is Susan Payne, the founder and former executive director of Colorado's anonymous reporting program and Joe Messina, president of the William S. Hart Union High School District. Thank you very much, Assemblywoman. Okay, both of your witnesses are calling in. Ms. Payne, we will start with you. You have two minutes. <clears throat> well, hello, everyone. This is Susan Payne. It's an honor to be here today. I will say in the 20 years since the tragedy at Columbine, one of the things that we know through evidence-based research is the lessons learned throughout these tragedies, but also what are the barriers and gaps. We know that young people know long before adults what's going on in their schools and their communities, and they need to be engaged and empowered in what to look for, what, how to speak up in a way that protects them and keeps them safe. That information has to be shared in a way that goes to a multidiscipline team at the school, and in some cases um, to emergency responders, depending on the information that's being obtained. It's been very successful throughout this country one of the top things that we know is that the cost of the loss of life by suicide or a random act of violence or targeted violence uh, costs our country more in dollars than the level of prevention that we put in and how we can save not only what makes common sense, but also saves uh, sense with the sea. So I hope to answer any questions you have about the effectiveness of this program that is evidence-based and has really identified through research that 80% of any school shooting in the history of the United <clears throat> States, that more than 80% of the time somebody knew before it occurred, and yet that information went unaddressed, and that information was not shared or reported. The last thing that I would say is that as we reach into the digital age and the need for young people and what's happening online, is they are seeing things at a rate that we can't even comprehend. When they see something over digital media, whether it's a threat to cause harm or a threat to cause someone to cause harm to themselves, it is so important that they're engaged and empowered and have a solution on how to report it. Jurisdictional boundaries don't always apply because a report in one state could save and prevent a school shooting in another state. So it is important that it's part of a comprehensive solution to school safety 
and it really builds that safer student, that safer school, and that safer community. Thank you. All right, let's go to your next witness, Joe Messina. Please proceed when you're ready. You also have two minutes. Well, my name is Joe Messina. I'm a current president of the William S. Hart High School District in Santa Clarita. I want to thank Assemblymember Valderas for asking me to testify in the committee for granting me the time to speak. My district serves a community of 22,000 kids, 16 school facilities, and over 2,000 employees. In November of 2019, I woke up to the shooting at Saugus High School. Now, I'm from Massachusetts, and I thought it was Saugus High School in Massachusetts. But I lived near the high school. When I heard the helicopters, my heart sank. I realized it was our school. I went down to see if I could do anything, and I was wrecked by the look of the teachers and the students' faces. Board members are still recouping from this, as well as staff and students, and I'm welling up just talking about it. We had, a, we had and we have a we tip kind of line. Though receiving no calls about that shooter, we received many calls that help our staff and sheriff's department assess situations from potential gang fights, child abuse, and to what may be perceived as hints of a school shooting. This year alone, we have received more than a dozen tips for potential acts of violence on campus with the use of guns. Because of getting this info to the authorities early enough, we were able to avert another tragedy. We were able to even probably save some young lives of kids that were suicidal. So please make sure that no parent, teacher, student, or board member has to go through this again. I hear the state has a surplus of funds. Let's allocate some of these funds to keep our kids safe. Thank you very much. All right, let's go here to room 2100 for witnesses in support. Seeing no one, let's go to the uh, phone lines. Moderator, please queue up anyone who wishes to speak in support of AB 312. Thank you. If you wish to speak in support of AB 312, please press 1, then 0 at this time. I have no comments. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Moderator. All right, let's go to lead opposition. I think we have Megan Bauer, Bayer. Megan, am I saying your last name right? Nice to see you. Uh, please proceed when you're ready. You have two minutes. Thank you. Megan Bear with the Association of California School Administrators. We don't yet have an official position, um, and we appreciate the author's intent very much. We are concerned about the bill in print, though. Currently, most of our districts do have locally run anonymous reporting systems. There are even applications that students or individuals can report anonymously on their phone. They don't even have to make a phone call. We are concerned that a statewide tip line may divert critical information away from the hands of local leaders who can actually act on it quickly. So. With all due respect, those are our, our concerns, and we look forward to working with the author. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, anyone here in room 2100 who wishes to oppose? Seeing no one, Madam Moderator, could you please queue up anyone who would, wishes to oppose AB 312? Thank you. If you wish to speak in opposition to AB 312, please press 1 and 0 at this time. I have no comments, thank you. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Let's bring it back to the board, the committee. Any questions, comments, or concerns? I'll be happy to, um, just be curious, would you like an opportunity to um, yes. address the concerns? Absolutely. So, what, 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 what is your question? So, my concern is if she wouldn't mind addressing the concerns that the witness oh, the position has. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Please proceed. We read each other's minds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, currently, to date, there are about 36 districts that have some form of anonymous, anonymous reporting system, including Saugus High School. There are 1,000 districts in California. So the intent of this bill is to make a streamlined statewide program that actually would have a commitment of full-time staff versus a lot of these other um, uh, systems, they have part-time faculty, people who sometimes, um, the, whether it's an email, uh, an, a text, Sometimes it goes weeks without being answered. This would streamline the process and actually get information, critical information, more rapidly to the proper authorities. So while I am willing to, to work on this bill to accept you know, any amendments um, that could make it better, I still think that the objective is for the you know, less than 3% of our districts have anonymous reporting systems. This is something that we should make available for every child in every school. Very good, thank you. Senator Pan. 
Uh, thank, thank you so much, <clears throat> Senator Valderas. So I appreciate the, what you're trying to achieve with the bill and certainly, uh, and, and also trying to address a very serious problem. Um, I guess my, my um, question and challenge in, in looking at this bill, I mean, this is the last policy committee it's going to, and there's, it seems like there's still a lot of questions. So for example, uh, and we've had discussions on other bills sort of similar to, in terms of, okay, so we have an anonymous tip line. I understand in your bill, it would be handled by a team from the school district. Um, Actually and from, it would be the CDE would re be responsible. Okay, well, okay, you have a, all right, a statewide. Then, um, and sort of back to the school ministers, I, I'm just trying to think implementation-wise. So goal-wise, okay, sound, sounds like, you know, we want to get that information. Uh, implementation-wise, and uh, I'm thinking like, all right, because we need to get it to people who are it's actionable, right? Because otherwise it just gets lost in the fog potentially, unless there's well laid out steps and then who the right people are. So for example, um, has there, you know, in, in addition to of course education uh, and we're the education committee, but uh, for example, is, is this, who's gonna follow up on these tips? Is it going to, is, is, is if you talk, you know, ha, is law enforcement weighed in in terms of their role? Um, is it going to be community groups? Because I know some people have concern about over policing. I'm just, I'm just trying to, th you know, th some of these things, questions are still kind of floating out there. I'm not sure. So I uh, hear we have a tip line. We, you know, someone calls in, the state's going to set up, and then where does it go from there, right? So how, how does it then end up to something actionable to again address the very problem you talked about? Because again, we want to try to prevent these shootings. So I, I do, I did, so. Um, so maybe if you can try to, 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 to uh, at least what your desire or your intent is uh, f f in terms of its implementation. Right. So CDE would have 24, 300 hours a day, 365 days a week, trained counselors that can assess the tip. And then each district would have three personnel who they designate. Um, and for some smaller districts that may have less personnel, we're willing to make some exceptions or modifications for those districts. Um, they would report it to them and there would be a plan in process. I would like to um, defer also to our witness on the line who has, um, Colorado has had the Safe to Tell program in operation for over two decades. And theirs is a statewide program. So could you answer um, how it works in Colorado just for the committee, so the committee can have a better understanding of um, how it gets down to the district? Yeah, and then also how the district would then handle the information then, so. So, and, and senators, those are wonderful questions because it is, I wish that I could actually show you and present to you so you could visually see it. But part of it is the tip of the iceberg is when uh, some empowered young person sees some concern that he, he or she can then report, whether it's through a mobile app, whether it's through an online process or a live phone call. That goes to that live answering point. Um, Nebraska just launched theirs and they have trained live counselors 24 <clears> seven <throat> that answer their reports. Um, those reports then are routed through the system, which if you work at the boots on the ground administrator level, you have an identified multidiscipline team. That would include an administrator, a counselor, if you have an SRO or a security person, um, and also like social workers. A lot of these tips result in needed social support. That tip is routed and you get a text alert that there's a tip if it's your jurisdiction. So I appreciated what the California Office of, or I think they were administrators representing administrators. Part of that is the timely communication that goes within this system immediately to the appropriate local jurisdiction for their immediate feedback and response. It saves everyone time and the ability to communicate if you're the counselor or someone that knows the student the best. It also works if it's a weekend or a holiday so, and someone needs to go because it's an urgent, imminent situation and someone needs to check the welfare or respond to a threat or act of violence. The last part is, is that within the system, and these are things that we've had to overcome in the last two decades, was if someone was texting you, they were limited by the number of characters. If, if a student took a picture with a different device of a Snapchat or an Instagram thread or something online, they would want to be able to upload a video or a photograph or one of those things that's a thousand words for the people that respond. The goal is that early intervention 
not only prevents tragedy and loss of life in mental health situations, in behavioral health concerns, but it also helps identify from a bystander that is the witness that is seeing that someone needs help, that is crying for help. Um, so it is a very sophisticated framework that once that tip comes in, it immediately goes. So in states, and I've been to Florida, to Parkland, to Sandy Hook, all of the states that have worked through this, part of it is showing how sophisticated that framework is and how that sets up timely, accountable communication delivered to the local jurisdiction boots on the ground. Thank you. Senator Pan, did you have any further questions? I, I just, um, <clears throat> so in terms of, so is this proposal modeled after a particular state's program, like Colorado or something, or? Correct. Which, which Sandy state? Sandy Hook, promised Sandy Hook. Oh, okay, so the one, I guess, do they operate the one in Connecticut, or? Correct. Okay, all right, okay. And they're actually. Well, and if I could clarify that. Yes, very quickly, yeah, please. Clarifying yes. that, Sandy Hook Promise came in and tried to, we have a statewide program, but they provide this service for individual local school districts that do not have a program, but you can expand on that. I don't know if you need to. Okay, okay, okay. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pan. Further questions or comments? All right, Assemblywoman, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a courtesy vote today because I, the, I know this is a recent gut and amend and it needs a lot of work. Uh, I don't know that CDE has the capacity to do what your bill is asking them to do. Um, if the bill gets out today, because my members are free to vote however they would like, um, please let us work with you and try to help you, because I think your intentions are great. I just don't think the bill is in the form um, of really being able to achieve what you want to achieve. So with that, would you like to uh, close? Yeah, yeah, Senator Pan. I, I too, um, joined the chair, and uh, so I, I think it, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, so uh, I, too, will vote for the bill today, but... Um, I'd like to see a lot more work before it shows up on the floor in terms of working out the details. Thank you. Thank you. Please proceed. Um, well, I appreciate that. I am, me and my staff are more than willing to work with you and the committee staff to making this bill um, as workable and as best as possible because our children deserve it. Um, I want to thank you for the amazing discussion that took place. I appreciate all of the comments and concerns, concerns raised today. And I want to commit, again, to working with you to make this a better bill. But I want to put this forward very directly. You are voting today on a program that has saved and continues to save young lives in other states. I ask you, in fact, I plead with you, don't let this opportunity keep our students, not keep our students safe. Because I promise you, one day it could be you waking up in your community attending a unity rally with over 10,000 people. And I don't want you to regret that today you could have taken a vote that could have stopped that, that tragedy from coming to your community. So with that, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Assemblywoman. I think we all agree. We just wanna make sure your bill accomplishes your goals. Uh, do we have a motion on the bill? Senator Glazer has moved the bill. Madam Assistant, please call the roll. File item 8, AB 312. The motion is due passed, but first be re-referred to the Committee on Appropriations. Leva. Aye. Leva, aye. Achoabog. Aye. Achoabog, aye. Cortez. Aye. Voting. Voting. Daly. Aye. Daly, aye. Glazer. Aye. Glazer, aye. McGuire. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. That is enough votes to get out, but we'll keep it open for our absent member. Thank you.